somebody is running hundreds of malicious servers on the Tor network and using them to de-anonymize people. Gee, I wonder who this person might be. Now, to understand how somebody can use a bunch of servers to compromise Tor users, you gotta know the basics of how Tor works. So here's a quick refresher. When you connect to Tor, all of your internet traffic is passed through three random servers, also known as relays, that are part of the Tor network. These relays are placed all over the world to make it very difficult for anybody, even a nation state that is doing mass surveillance on all of the citizens within its borders, to de-anonymize users on the Tor network. And each of these relays also encrypts traffic with its own keys. So to see what somebody is doing on Tor in the clear, you would have to take over these three international servers that the person is using. And even if you manage to do that, getting a new identity that sends you through three totally different servers is just a click away. Now, these relays that serve as the backbone of the Tor network, they're not running within rack-mounted servers. Well, I'm sure that some of them are, but that's not necessary to be a relay. Any computer capable of running the software, and it could be Linux, Windows, or macOS, although I don't think that macOS is officially supported, but I'm sure that there are some out there that are functioning as relays, any of them can serve that purpose. Anything from a Raspberry Pi to a big old mainframe could be a Tor relay. You also don't need to be some kind of network engineering genius to run a Tor relay. Regular everyday people are able to do it. There's no forms to fill out or background checks that you have to go through. And while I think that those are good things when we're talking about a network like Tor, uh, it also is what opens it up to the problem that is going on right now. Typically, the Tor network has about six to 8,000 relays uh, and about 10,000 servers in total if we're including bridges, although you can see by this graph that since mid-2018, uh, there has not been quite as many relays or quite as many bridges, rather. And this threat actor who is being called KAX, so I guess CAX-17, has deployed up to 900 relays at one time. So many that at its peak, there was actually a 35% chance that your traffic could have gone through one of those relays being controlled by CAC-17. And these are just the ones that have been identified. Uh, CAC-17 could have many more that are functioning properly for now, and so they can't really be identified as a malicious relay, but at the flip of a switch, they could then go malicious. And I bet this is the strategy that CAC-17 is using because earlier this year, about 600 non-exit relays were kicked from the Tor network by the Tor directory authorities. Now, CAC-17 is a much more severe threat actor than some of the other malicious actors that we have seen attack the Tor network recently. If we look at the breakdown of the relays that are believed to be operated by CAC-17 uh, in their profile, so they've been active since 2017. That's where the 17 in their name comes from. They're considered sophisticated, non-amateur, uh, and highly persistent. They're using large amounts of servers, including non-cheap cloud hosters like Microsoft. So making money doesn't really seem to be the goal of CAC-17. And this is further confirmed by the relays that they're operating. So they're mainly non-exit relays, entry guards and the middle relays. Uh, to a lesser extent, they are using some exit relays. Now, the reason that this is significant and the reason that this makes me believe that they're not after money is because, as far as I know, exit relays are what you're going to go for if you're going to try to scam people, like steal Bitcoin from them or anything like that. If we compare it to BTC Man in the Middle 20, they were mostly running exit relays because their whole game was they would look for traffic on Tor that is somebody sending usually Bitcoin to somebody else and they would try to change that traffic at the exit. They would try to change the Bitcoin address that the person is trying to send to to one that they run. Like I said, I'm not aware of any kinds of hacks that you can do to really steal money from somebody 
if you're running something other than an exit relay on Tor. If you do know of one, then feel free to comment about it below. But the fact that they're not running exit relays, the fact that they're running pretty much everything else, tells me that they're trying to de-anonymize people. They're trying to identify people. That is the primary purpose of CAC 17. And that's what leads me to believe that it could be a nation state that's trying to conduct surveillance on people that are using Tor, as well as trying to identify where hidden services are physically running. Because at the end of the day, all of the dark web marketplaces, the hidden forums, and every other Onion site that is running out there is running on some person's computer. So if the feds find it, they can then go and shut it down. This would also be a really good time for an agency like the DEA to try and shut down marketplaces on Tor and find people that are using them because two very famous dark web marketplaces, White House Market and Canazon, retired. So that's two fewer places that the feds have to bust and two fewer places that people are going to be going to buy their illegal rugs. Uh, so they're going to be searching for other ones out there and this just makes the Fed's job easier. In fact, if I'm remembering this right, Mr. White, the owner of the White House market, recommended that people start shopping at Torres Market before he disappeared. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is the market that the Feds are going to be gunning for right now. Now, there is a silver lining to all of this. Like I said earlier, anybody can run a Tor relay. It doesn't cost you anything but a bit of bandwidth, and if you're on an unmetered line with plenty to spare, then that should be no big deal. And I know that some of you have some spare bandwidth, uh, because at least a dozen or so people downloaded and seeded the torrent that I made of Chaos Guest Anthology. So you could help the Tor network by using a spare computer that is connected to your network as a relay. We know that whoever CAC-17 is, they have access to a good bit of money to go and spin up high bandwidth servers, enough to have something like one in 10 relays under their control. But what if there were 100,000 Tor relays on any given day instead of what, about 6,000 right now? Okay, suddenly CAC-17 has an order of magnitude less power than before, and in addition to making the Tor network safer, the additional bandwidth would make it so much faster, especially if the people running relays can provide high uptime machines and high speed connections. So let's all run relays. I've got a spare ThinkPad, so I'll see about using that to make an instructional relay deployment video. One thing that you should know, though, for those of you enthusiastic folks who are going to go and spin up relays tonight, check with your ISP, your internet service provider, and I guess your local government to make sure that you're allowed to, especially if you decide to set up an exit relay, because as the name exit relay implies, you'll be handling traffic that is leaving Tor for the clear net. And if that traffic is illegal, it will appear to be coming from your house and the ISP may cut you off and or send the police to your door. So be mindful of that. But like I said, CAC-17 isn't even really running the exit relays anyway. They're mostly running the guard and middle relays, which don't have as much legal liability with them. Uh, like and comment to hack the algorithm. Bully your friends and coworkers into running tour relays as well and have a great rest of your day.